I, I hope you've convinced. Turn to someone and says, are you convinced that you're his son or daughter? You, are you persuaded? Amen. Are you convinced that you are God's property? Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, sometimes you don't live like you do. Right. Hi, my name is Angel Falcon, and I'm honored to be uh, before you here today. We believe that there's no greater responsibility entrusted to us as believers uh, to give you, teach you the Word of God. I trust that you will be richly blessed by what you're about to hear. Remember that as we increase in the knowledge of God's Word, His blessings are sure to fall upon us. Trust you will be. I want to really jump right into, uh, as you know, uh, this is the sixth part of a series concerning what the benefits that are in Christ Jesus to believers. We got into the series because sometimes we come to church and we don't really understand fully uh, what, what it really means to be a part of God's kingdom, a part of his family as sons and daughters of God. Amen. And I think it's so important uh, that that we understand that um, we can and, and we're going to we're going to talk about that here today. And there's some things that uh, as we close this series, this is the sixth part, you know, and I and I pray. Have you been blessed so far? Amen. You know, because it's who we are in Christ. Hallelujah. It is it is what he purchased for us to walk in and to live for. And I think it's it's vitally important. So we're going to indulge in, uh, just dive in, I guess, uh, uh, into into Colossians. Turn with me to Colossians chapter one. It's going to read a few scripture verses, and then, but I'm really going to focus on a theme. And some of the scriptures we may have read, but there's some other nuggets I want to draw out of some of the scriptures that we'll be reading. But I hope you came to receive. Amen. Amen. I, I hope you have convinced. Turn to someone and says, are you convinced that you're his son or daughter? You, are you persuaded? Amen. Are you convinced that you are God's property? Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, sometimes you don't live like you do. Right. But I, I really want to push, you know, and give birth to what God wants to do here today. So you are, you got to understand that you may not be perfect, but when we accept Jesus as our Lord and savior, we enter into his family. We are, we are now sons and daughters of the most high. And then we are a work in progress, but you're a part, you're already adopted into his family. With the rights and privileges of that family. Amen. Even though we're still growing. Now listen to, let, let's read. And in order to, for us to fully uh, embrace the, 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 the topic today, I'm going to need to read, I, I want to read some verses before the, you know, the, that specific topic that I want to address. So look. It starts in verse 9. We're at Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. For this reason we also, since the day that we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled, filled to capacity. You know, this, this, this is a provoking point because, you, you know, you can, if you can be filled, you can be empty. But it's prayers that we get to that place where we're walking in the fullness of those things 
that, that God has for us. Sadly, the church is not walking in the full. They're walking in some, but not the fullness. And so that's important for us to understand. What God's Word is going to challenge you here today. That you be filled with what? With the knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you may walk worthy, worthy, deemed entirely deserving. That you may walk worthy of the Lord fully pleasing Him. Being fruitful of every good work and increasing in the knowledge. Notice, increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthen with all might, not some might, not half might, not two quarters of a, but with all might. Say that with me. Strengthen with all might. Don't you ever settle for nothing less. Amen. According to his glorious power. For all patience and long suffering with joy. So in other words, now it's saying that, you know, there's a process. We're going to go through some stuff. Be patient. Turn to someone and say, did you hear that? Paciencia. Yeah. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> with joy. Giving thanks to God. Now, this is the this is the main scripture verse. So pay real close attention here. <clears throat> Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of his inheritance of the saints in the light. And has delivered us. He has rescued us. He has. Is he going to? Yes. The process has been done. All you got to do is step into it. It has been done. It's available to those that believe. So that's why it says past tense. Now that's a critical point that we're going to see in a minute. This is going to cause you to walk in greater things in God. This is really going to, you know, what happens when this fully becomes revelation knowledge to us, when it's inside our, our hearts and minds, our conscience, our, it affects it affects the, the, who we are as individuals. It impacts our character. Affects how we see God and his work in us. And then our capacity to move forward. Amen. And how we face things. Because you're not alone. People may fail you. Yes. Yes. But God won't ever He'll never drop the ball on you. He will never fall short. In delivering you. He goes on to say, we're going to backtrack, but he says, he has delivered you. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us or transferred us into the kingdom of his son, the son of his love. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. Hallelujah. All right, so now, we, now we're going to backtrack. The key word here is that the Father, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. Who qualified us? God qualified us. Did you qualify yourself? No, no you didn't. Oh, but I was a good person. A good person don't qualify. <laughs> because you came from a good family, it doesn't qualify. You. Because you're financially set, that doesn't qualify you neither. Because you come to church, that don't qualify you neither. Turn to someone and say, hmm. Yeah, because somebody's here. Somebody's here. Somebody's here. Somebody's, you, you, some people are here just because they want to appease somebody other than God. Some of you are here because mom and daddy made you come here. Uh, stay focused, Falcon, stay focused. For giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of his 
of the inheritance of the saints, partakers. He has already. The question here that I want to drive home is, do you see yourself as qualified? Man, what does that imply? God has qualified you. We've talked about being sealed, remember? We talked about, you know, God's, uh, now we are in right standing. We have access into the holies of holies. Well, he qualified us to do that. We have, we have, we, it's, it's uh, you know, we, we shared concerning, you know, being an heir of the kingdom and an heir is, you know, I mean, you qualify just because of who you are, because of the part of the family. My, I shared, you know, some weeks ago how my son, he's an heir of all that I have. Sooner or later, he's going to inherit it. You know, my children will inherit, you know, my, my estate. And it doesn't matter, even though he's young, right, and doesn't really understand what that means, I trust me, when he comes of age, he's going to thank daddy for leaving him better off than others. It's an inheritance. So the beauty about the scripture verse concerning that the Bible says, again, that you are qualified. It says the Father who has, again, past tense, who has qualified you. Now, that word itself, qualified, means to make you sufficient. God has made you sufficient. He has rendered, one translation says, he has rendered you fit to the task. What task is that? Fit. Uh, to be equipped with adequate power to perform an inherent task. An inherent right that we receive because we're in Jesus. Understand that. This is not, this is not a self-imposed qualification. You understand? That it's because I'm in Jesus and what he accomplished I am now a child of God, and God qualifies me. Yes, amen. He empowers me for life. He empowers me to operate in his kingdom. Yes. Empowers me to resist and oppose the devil. Amen. You know, Understand this, this is something some people got to, you, you can cry all you want, you can why? oh, why is this happening to me, why is that? Are you resisting the devil? What are you doing to resist the devil? Stop whining, the Bible says if you resist the devil, what happens? He'll flee. So the only reason why the devil's hanging around is because you don't know how to resist the devil. You don't know you've been qualified. Qualified. To use the name that has been given unto you that is above all names. I love Jesus. I love his disciples because they knew who they were. They knew that they were qualified. I love the story on Acts chapter 3. When Peter and John went into the town and, and they were going into the synagogue and there was this guy who was, who was lame, lame since his birth. Asking for alms. That story should ignite something in you. It inspires me because Peter says this. Well, I don't have silver and gold. Obviously, they didn't have any loose change in their pockets. But what I do have, what I do have, I give unto you. He knew he was qualified to be God's representative. Amen. Are you? Do you feel that way? Do you feel that way? Hallelujah. Ask yourself Hallelujah. honestly. Hallelujah. God, man, our generation is waiting for you to walk in what God qualified you for. And we're in desperate need, desperate need for you to move divinely and, and just and and Hallelujah. let God move 
and, and, and do his stuff and rescue people. That's what he loves to do. Deliver them, set them free. His mission. So, qualified. Hmm. I wanted to make sure that I understood the content of this scripture verse. The Father who has qualified us to be partakers of his inheritance, the Father has qualified, has qualified. There are specific Greek laws of language that really makes this pretty clear. And I read, I read several uh, commentaries concerning all of, you know, uh, what this signifies. You are qualified. He has qualified you to be partakers of all that God has. In the King James Version commentary, it says this. It says, he qualifies us. That means that he made us competent and efficient. I wanted to read that specifically because sometimes some of us don't always feel that way. We, all, oh, we don't ever, and, and I'm telling you this because I know. Because this is a journey that everybody goes through. You know, sometimes we, how many times do we really feel unqualified or, uh, you know, uncompetent to deal with some of the challenges we're dealing with? At work, at home, and even sometimes in church. We fall short in our own strength. But listen to this. He says he qualifies us. He makes us competent and sufficient. This is true of every Christian. There are no degrees of fitness. He makes us fit. Qualified. That's another translation. He makes us there's no degree of fitness. Fitness depends on privilege and position, not character or experience. The Greek, the Greek aorist tense, in other words, the past tense element, points to the instantaneous act of conversion. See, when we become born again, at that moment we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, the transformation begins. At that moment, we are now heirs of the kingdom of God, even though we're still a work in progress. <clears throat> are you following me? So now, so he goes this, he goes, it is an interesting, interesting, instantaneous act of conversion, not a progressive process. It is a present reality. At that moment, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life because of the atoning power of the blood of Jesus. You are qualified. Turn to someone and says, God qualified me. I'm accepted. I'm an heir of the kingdom. Hallelujah. I belong. I'm God's property. And that's why I hate when the devil tries to come around and rob you of your rights. That's an injustice. And, and you know, oftentimes the devil will blind believers into getting things because they're ignorant of their rights. Even though they qualify. The, the worst thing for me, the worst thing for me is to see someone who, who has the authority to do something and won't. If a cop had the authority to arrest somebody who did injustice and you saw him pass by someone, wouldn't it upset you? And yet, too many Christians are doing the same when you've been qualified. I was looking into the Nelson study uh, commentary concerning, again, that word qualified. The implication is clear. The, the word means to be able or authorized for a task. Qualified. Believers can never be qualified on their own. Instead, God must take them, make them sufficient through Jesus Christ. The tense of the verb points to qualifying as an act in the past rather than a process. Are you hearing this, church? Focus on what Jesus did, then walk in what he did. Sometimes we're trying to earn everything. 
Now, our obedience, you know, see, here's, here's, here's something that's amazing. You know, our works follow us, you know, because I got to I make that, make that clear. Because some people think, oh, so I'm qualified no matter what I do. Well, if you're in Christ, you're qualified. And if you're in Christ, God is working in you and you're walking right. You know, your attitude, you allow the spirit of God to, to, to mold us and refine us and, and purge us and chasten us. You know what I'm saying? If you're in Christ. So, but though the works that you do are rewards. You follow me? Your obedience and what you do for the kingdom and all those are rewards. But don't misinterpret. Don't don't think for a moment that you earn Amen. your salvation. Amen. Trust me, you are not that good. <laughs> and this is the danger in our, in our generation. You know, they think that you know. The scripture tells us that people, some some churches, Jesus rebuked some churches because they thought. You know, uh, they were doing the right thing, but their hearts was, they were doing good works. They were feeding the hungry. They were clothing the naked. They were doing good works, but they were never qualified through the blood of Jesus. I was reading the uh, Believer's Bible com commentary. He says this, when God saved someone, he instantaneously bestowed on that person fitness for heaven. Did you get that now? The fitness is in Christ. Nothing can improve on that. You cannot improve on that. Not even a long life of obedience and service here on earth makes a person more fit for heaven than he was the day that he was saved. Our title to glory is found in his blood. Now, fruits follow that experience. You can't say that I'm in Christ. You know, he made me qualified and I'm doing totally the contrary. I'm disconnected with God. I'm not pursuing God. I'm not praying. You follow? But I want to focus on the fact that you're qualified. As a believer, you are qualified. Now, I want to call your attention to this factor. Now, this scripture we read. Turn with me to Galatians. Because here's the problem in with believers. Here's, here's, a, here's a challenge. Here's where we're really challenged. Because here God says that we're qualified to, 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 you know, to really do amazing things. We're qualified to be sons and daughters, right? But but so then what's 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 the issue? What's the problem? It tells us that we're qualified, but we still got to grow in knowledge and wisdom, right? We have to find out what that means. So now, as a child of God, I accepted Jesus' atonement, but now as, a, as, a, as an individual, I got to find out what does that all mean? You know, Jesus qualified me, so now I have to find out and embrace everything that that means. And when that happens, beloved, it, it, it just really, it shifts everything about you. It makes our purpose and God's plan such more clearer because in everything in life, you know, in everything that comes your way, I got to believe God has qualified me to deal with this. God has qualified me. God has called me. If God called me, if he called you, he qualified you. If he called you, he'll equip you. You might not know everything you need, but you're going to trust God and go, you know, do what, what I got. I got to believe God. My, my greatest triumphs was obedience, knowing that this was God's will for me. Did I understand every element, every aspect of it now? But I knew it was God's will. So in Galatians, let's begin reading in chapter 3, beginning of verse... 26. In order for us to, again, understand and, you know, the context, look at, look at these verses. For you are all sons and daughters of God through faith in Jesus Christ. 
And the reason why I use sons and daughters is because, you know, when they, the writers of the Bibles, they all, at that time, the culture was, they always wrote to, in a masculine sense. But it encompasses man and woman. You believe that? God is not a respecter person. He ain't, he's not prejudiced. So he says, for as many of you as were baptized into Christ, you have put on Christ. See, if you're, if you're in Christ, you have put him on. For there, in God's eyes, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither, there's neither slave nor free. Don't matter who you are or what, you're, what side of the track you're from. Ooh. There is neither male or female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then are you Abraham's seed. And heirs, heirs according to the promise. Now, I say that the heir, it's talking about those that have been qualified, right? It's talking about believers. That's who we are as an heir. Now, listen carefully. This is the problem. The problem is, and we're going to read this. Look, now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, as long as he's still immature, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all. So you've been qualified. You're master of all. But because of our ignorance, our immaturity, we're not enjoying that that we inherit. Did you grab hold of that? Isn't that good? Too often we're blaming everybody else. You know, when it's, you know, again, all of the beauty about God's redemptive plan is his trying to, to paint his image in us. He's trying to help us understand that because he's in you, you can do all things through Christ, who is your strength. There's, there, we can stand, we can resist. I know stuff happens, but for me, for me, I need to stand on the word of God and not turn around. But look, he says, even though he's master of all, but is under guardians. See, when you're, when you're immature, you're under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. That Father is not capitalized. It doesn't mean God. But you know what? It's like uh, I read this, this, this interesting story. I actually heard, didn't read it, heard it. Somebody was, was quoting it where this wealthy family, you know, they were very well off. And they bought their kid a brand new, fully loaded, top of the line Mercedes Benz. I forget what model it was. And they gave it to their six-year-old kid. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What a tease. Don't you think so? You know? So they gave it to him, but he couldn't use it. But he's still heir to it. He still owns it. They turned it on every day. They made sure it was in the garage. It was, I mean, it, you know, kept in really good shape. It was maintained. Uh, there, there was very little mileage on it because they took it just to run around, you know, do all these things. But he, number one, he wasn't even legal. He couldn't even drive that until he's about 17 or 18 years old. But he still owns it. It's still his. Until he grew to maturity to begin to utilize what was given to him. Same thing holds true to the body of Christ because God says you are qualified. He's made you qualified because of what Jesus did. He's qualified you to be partakers of this inheritance. To embrace it. To walk in the blessings of it. You see yourself that way. See, that's the challenge. I know, I know this, this, will, this, this, this can mess you up many. But God says, he's powerful. And all you got to do is just embrace. You're a part of his family. Embrace his blessings. Embrace his love and commitment towards you. And that's why he's able to say that there's no power in heaven on earth 
that can separate us from the love of God. There's nothing. Absolutely nothing. This truth, listen carefully, has to be heavily meditated on. Not medicated. <laughs> meditated on. <laughs> Some of us like to be medicated. <laughs> but when this reality hits you and you begin to walk in it, Beloved, you open up the doors of heaven and God is able to lead and guide you and, and cause you. Doesn't mean you're not going to be challenged. Doesn't mean things aren't going to happen. But, there's, you know, you're going you're gonna to get breakthroughs in your life. God wants you to enjoy. He says in his word, he says, no good thing will I withhold from you. What do you think? You think God is teasing you? Here, get it. Get the blessing. Get the blessing. <laughs> you laugh. You laugh. But that's how many of us act. You've been qualified. God wants you to know that he has done everything. Yes. Everything is complete for you. Everything's ready for you. Thanks. Just step into it. Embrace it. Embrace it. Embrace it. Here's, here's, let me, I'm trying, to, I'm saying, Lord, how, how can I illustrate this? But here's an interesting thing. We have law enforcement agents here. And even when you have graduates, now these are rookies. In, in a sense, right? Rookie law enforcement. They are empowered with the same power as those veterans that have served for years. But it'll take them a while, you know, before they get that confidence. You follow what I'm saying? They know they've been empowered, but they're still kind of wet behind the ears. And that's where the body of Christ, a large portion, let me correct that. A large portion of the body of Christ is. They don't have confidence. In their covenant privileges in Christ. The more they get confidence as to the law, the more understanding we have as to our personal rights, amen, the more confident we are in walking in it and obtaining all of God's best. So don't don't ever you, we have we have to we have to get this in our spirits that you've been qualified. God has qualified you. Through the Son. You already accept it. If you've confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He goes on to say, he says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Because God has prepared, he has prepared before that we should walk in it. So this was God's plan from the get-go. Sons and daughters. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, kings and priests. Interesting. Kings are rulers, priests are spiritual leaders. So he makes you both to walk in. We have to learn to develop. that inherent right and I, I'll be the first to confess to you that it doesn't come easy because it's unnatural for us to see us but we get when we get to that place when we see ourselves as a child of God in covenant with God walking in obedience with God that's why he says what will I not do for you how can I not intervene for you? Last scripture verse. In Psalms, we read this scripture verse, so I just want to pull some things out for you. Psalms 103.
Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me, and bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not. Forget, say that, forget not. Don't let go of this. Remember this. Don't allow the devil to rob this reality. And forget not all his benefits. Forget not all the privileges that come as a child of God. And then he begins to share the, the, the benefits. Again, right? These are my benefits. Yes. Yes. He says this. He goes, who forgives all your iniquity? So now, the sin that separated you from God is no longer there because you've confessed Jesus as your Lord. So that, that wipes you clean. Gives us access to God. Amen. Who heals all your diseases. He's a healer. He's a healer. He is a healer. Hallelujah. <coughs> oh, but I don't know. You, you know. Just the other day, you know, went to get my physical. You know. You, you know, sometimes I wonder if I should even go to those things. I'm, a, I'm, a, uh, I'm sorry for those medical experts out there and the, and the nurses. So, so, sometimes, you know, you, you listen. Listen, bottom line, I went there and something that wasn't quite right. They said, well, you got to come back. They were very careful not to get me upset. But, you know, here they say there's something not quite right. <laughs> say what? <laughs> the first thing in my mind, right, was, huh? And so, okay, hold up. Now, with this new technology, I have a portal right into my medical, you know, you know, so I went in there, blah, 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 blah and, and it's all hieroglyphics. Don't understand nothing. 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 It just says, it shows you the, the range that you should be in, but what is LIPDs? What is, I don't know what LIPDs. Speak English to me. But, you know, within range, positive. And then also negative, negative. And negative was good, but another one, negative was bad. I'm saying, okay, which, what? So I finally call, I call, I say, what's up? He said, oh yeah, well, this slight, there's a slight little problem, blah, 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 you know, but maybe it happened because, you know, maybe you weren't hydrated enough. And I tell you, man, I, as a man of God, I had to cast down thoughts because immediately, you know, <gasps> cholesterol, <laughs> blood pressure, you know, I, you know, sometimes the more you know, the more trouble you get into. <laughs> Oh, forgive me, Father. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Amen. But all I know this, all, you know, all I says, you know what? Jesus is my healer. Hallelujah. So they said, come back and uh, we want to draw some more blood. All right, so like six vials weren't enough. <laughs> so I got to go and get, get, get a little more, right? Sure enough, the, you know, a few days later, all the lab work came in. You're okay. <laughs> They're okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, I speak the word to my body. Because I'm not telling. <laughs> he's, ah. he's a healer. He's a healer who redeems your life from destruction. If a, war if a hurricane comes by your street, just know that he'll deliver you from destruction. You got to know that. Amen. You got to know that. Amen. Amen. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy and who satisfies your mouth with good things Amen. so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. I like that verse. Because no matter how old, your youth will be renewed. I don't know how I don't care how much white hair I got or how many numbers of the head I have on top of my head so long as God gives me my vitality strength to keep on doing what I gotta do amen I'm qualified he qualifies us he qualifies you beloved thank you Lord he qualifies you to be 
his representatives. He qualifies you to obtain his promises. Don't forget his promises. Hold on to your promises. Don't let anything persuade you. Scripture says, whose report are you going to believe? Are you going to believe what other people are saying? Or are you going to believe what I'm telling you? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are qualified. We are his beloved. Thank you. He's embraced us. The beauty about this is that he took you in when you were when you were at your worst. And most of us came to God at our worst. Some of us have been exposed to God in our in our young years. But there comes a time when you're gonna experience something. That so draws you to God that God shows you. His desire to embrace you. Restore you. And take you as his own. That is a place, beloved, where fear cannot take root. There is a peace in knowing that that no matter what the challenges, I know that he orders my steps. I know that no good thing will he withhold. I know that I am partakers of this glorious inheritance. I want you to know that. And I think it's important because sometimes we think that because we miss God in a moment that that, you know, some of us we think that, you know, listen, how many of us have children? How many of us, those kids have missed it? Right? Our kids, our kids have missed it. Has that stopped you from loving them? No. Has that stopped them from qualifying to be your sons and daughters? That's right. But there is a process of learning. And the challenge here is don't be children. Where you're not walking or embracing that which God has incurred you to enjoy. But grow in the knowledge and wisdom that God has for us. Because you're precious. And he has qualified you. When God himself has qualified you, it don't matter what anybody else says. Right? Forget not. Forget not his benefits. I want the communion elements uh, to be brought forth, please. Thank you.